Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Five Games, Five Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk. This is Uno, a brilliant conversion of the Waddington's card game. Totally unofficial, it was released by Headfirst PD on a compilation disc, which also contained quite a few other goodies. In Uno, you're dealt seven cards, and you choose which one to lay down by moving your cursor to it. You play any card that has the same colour as the current card, or any card that's got the same number. You also get wild draw four cards and plus cards, as well as null cards. These can turn any game on its head within a few seconds. The computer plays an intelligent game, and I personally find Uno very addictive. In fact, I've been known to play this game for a full hour or so. By way of a bonus too, here's a quick look at Feed the Frog by Headfirst PD, which also comes on the same disc. Flick the frog's tongue to catch as many flies as you can before time runs out. Both are high quality games from Headfirst PD. When Video Classics was released, it was harking back about 15 years, to the era of the Atari, when people would sit up all night playing blip or tennis. The Atari game Blip was so named because of the sound the ball made as it ricocheted off the bat. Video Classic attempts to bring Blip back to life, which isn't a bad idea in itself because, strange as it may seem, there aren't many versions of it on the Electron at all. To get six at once is even better. Now, if you have a mate to play it with, I suspect Video Classics is quite good. Alas, I don't. And, alone, this game is terrible. Why? Because there's absolute zero variety in the way the computer plays its game. Once you've learned how it moves, you can beat it every single time by just playing exactly the same way. The one exception is Aster Bliproids, which introduces so many random elements that it can just about squeeze a half-decent one-player game out of it. After reading its own publicity, I had high hopes for this one, but it doesn't deliver. Shipwreck 2 is a disc-only graphic adventure set on a space station. The game opens with 10 pages of instructions, two diagrams and a rather flashy animation. However, the game itself is no more complicated than the average graphic adventure. You just have to collect items, then use them in the right place. There is one mammoth difference, however. Shipwreck 2 is a free-scrolling graphic adventure. Your character stays centre screen, whilst each time you move, the screen scrolls with you. Although this looks very impressive, it's actually something of a curse. This is because the aliens that inhabit the spaceship don't really seem to appear until you enter their area. The effect is that they therefore simply appear without any warning, and you're deader than chintz before you have time to blink. This is such a problem that the author actually included an invulnerability cheat in the standard game. If you don't turn this on, you'll last about 20 seconds tops. Mind you, that's not to say that this game is bad, but for sure it's one of the most difficult games that exist for the Electron. Blagger is an early game from Alligator that was subsequently given a bit of a makeover by Superior Acon Soft. The Superior version is a lot better, so that's the one you can see at the moment. These days, the word Blagger is more associated with a successful liar than a thief, but 30 years ago, Blagger and thief were virtually synonymous. With this in mind, you shouldn't be surprised to find that you're playing a bank robber. You need to collect five keys on each screen in order to open the bank's safe. You have all the familiar ladders and levels inclusions here conveyors, disappearing sections, patrolling nasties, and of course collectible items. In fact, the only thing that's really missing are the ladders themselves. It's a little bit slow and very samey throughout, and let's be honest, it hardly looks inviting. The game itself is identical in each version, but the superior revamp got rid of the strange key combinations used in the original. The superior version also allows you to start on any screen too. If I haven't completely put you off by now, then you're probably going to enjoy it. Weenies is the name for the little people, and your task in this game is to make sure they get from their hatch to their home. You therefore control a cursor. You move it around, dropping ropes, platforms and ladders, and you need to think about the weenies' behaviour as you do so. So you've got to think, which way will they logically go when they get here? And is that going to be safe for them? You must save every weenie on every level to get the password for the next one. Clearly a lot of inspiration for this game came from the Amiga game Lemmings. But this isn't a clone, it plays very differently. A big difference between the two is that you don't click the weenies themselves to perform actions, you click the terrain to change it. This makes weenies a great game in its own right, whilst offering Seasons Lemmings players something a little bit different. Graphically, this game is outstanding. 
The only things really wrong with it are that sometimes the cursor seems to move a bit sluggishly, and occasionally the only way to complete a level is to race around dropping the terrain in the first few seconds. That means that you have to lose that level several times previously in order to work out what to do. Wholeheartedly recommended.